They got the white flag first time by, and they're going to be coming around for the green flag. Eight laps for these four cars. Chris Howard, a quick qualifier. Brad McBride, always tough. Randy Carroll, always improving. Must be driver from last year. They are off. Puff goes up the hill a little bit, doesn't bother me in, and she's hanging right tough in there. Going to try and get him back on the outside, going down the back stretch. Chris has uh, got his nose inside McBride a little bit. Things are a little tight going through three and four. Looks like Puff might come out of here with the lead on lap number one. McBride on the inside gets over on P2. If he stuffs it in the corner hard, he's going to wake up John. He does. Hello. John lets him go by, gives him some racing room. Chris Howard going to get a ticket on that train. With McBride, Howard, Puff, and Carroll. Chris Howard gets into three a little, a little better than McBride gets into three, but Chris a little loose coming out, having trouble running down the nine machine. The nine machine still out front. It's Chris Howard. Brad McBride has broke out of his time. A quarter second rule, two laps in a row. The official leader is the 50 of Chris Howard. Brianna Carroll second, John Puff third as the Machine of Brad McBride has been officially disqualified for breaking out under his time. The timing and scoring pretty easy to tell when we get things working the way they should be. McBride qualified at an 18441 on 17 9. A couple of different times. So McBride breaks out of his time, and you winner for the first heat race of the night. You got a chance to talk, hear him a little bit earlier on the. Here they come through three and four. It's Demon and Jack. The green flag flies with a good fair start. We are off and running. And Demon with a power problem. That car did not go. He was tapping on the hood or the roof of the car. I don't think it was his fault. I think it just didn't go. I don't know if it didn't shift or what. We're gonna we're gonna pull that one back and do it again. Demet Jack. Rollin, James, Cook, Hudson, Jack, Fisher, Wilcox, Cohen, Cook. Here they go, good start, and we are off. Much better start for the 216 that time. Into one. Mowing the grass, doing a good job. Just jumps out into the lead. We'll see who got the horsepower down the back stretch. Hey, it's the 216 of Dimmit. Jack slides back to third. Kind of a surprise there. Tommy Cook slides underneath him. Going to try and get P3. Dead even at the line. 
On the inside, it's Wallen. On the outside, it's Dimmitt. Two experienced racers, they'll race each other clean. And to the point, it's the 70 of Jeremy Wallen. Jack attack side by side for fourth. Fisher Jr. working the inside of James, looking to get in the inside of one of the Jack brothers. Working Tanner Jack over. It's early. These guys have been on the same tires all night long, so you might see some guys being conservative early. But not Wallen and Cook. They're off and running. Getting about a four or five car length lead over Dimmitt in the 216. Fisher to the inside. Hunter Jack going to go to the inside of Dimmitt. We'll take a look. See, Dimmitt gives him a little bit of racing room. But he's driving by experienced drivers. Hunter Jack to the inside. Fisher to the inside. Oh, gets by Wilcox. He's going to go chase the field down a little bit. Tried the inside, last lap. Got the door slammed on him. Ball and seen that trick long. A little bit loose. That might give Cook an advantage of Hunter Jack looking to the outside. He has joined that front party after a three or four car length lead has evaporated. Now we've got five, six cars, seven cars, eight cars all kind of nose to tail. Dimmitt going to go to the out inside of Fisher. Cook to the inside of Wallen. And Cook finds room on the inside. Wallen slows dramatically. We'll keep an eye on that car if it's got a mechanical problem or a flat tire or something. He went from the point to the back in a big hurry. But he's a wise racer. He may just Slow down and regather everything. Tommy Cook to the point. A 41. Eight of Hunter Jack second. Terry Fisher third. Matt Dimmitt hanging tough in fourth in the 216 machine. And the 70 machine comes to a crawl. Coming out of two and on the back stretch. Austin Coe made a couple of ch quick changes on that car. He'll pick up on the tail of the race. Also, we got 39 to go, 11 in. Two cars with quick pit stops. We'll see if that strategy works. Green flag flies. It's Cook and Jack leading them down the front stretch on the half. Hunter Jack gets a move to that car out front. Cook's good in the bottom side. And the course power just won that. As Hunter Jack just outpowered Cook going down the front stretch. And man, they're uh, stretching it out quickly on third place Fisher. Again, this is a long 50 lap race. And you don't win it early.
Jeremy Rowland apparently does not like whatever changes they made in that car in the pit area. He is off again. And Brian James, he's heading back to the pit area. So attrition early for several of the racers who are normally pretty dependable machines. Occasionally you get a night of attrition, and this could be one of them. Hunter Jack out front, stretching out the lead a little bit. Hudson and Tanner Jack. Battling it out for fifth. Looks like the jack attack on the outside. That jack horsepower, these guys are making moves on the outside tonight in the twin 41 machines. Takes over the fifth spot from Hudson. And eyeball Dennett. Have trouble getting around him. He don't make too many mistakes. Gary Fisher Jr. Quick qualifier of the night. Off into the pit area. In, 30 to go. And Jim, it gives him a little bit of room on the inside. Tanner Jack going to try and stuff it in there. Hello, and we are side by side. One, two, three, and four. Billy Hudson buys a ticket on that train. Doesn't give Matt a chance to get back down in the low groove. Hudson's going to try and take over P4. Tommy Cook might be getting up on the wheel a little bit if we watch the times. Uh, he was four-tenths of a second faster that time than Hunter Jack that time around. We'll keep an eye on that interval for you. Cross flags, we are halfway home. Hunter Jack a little quicker that time than Cook by about two-tenths of a second. Take this car on the speedway at that lap. Was the 41 of Hunter Jack. to go. Hunter Jack with a fairly comfortable lead at this point. 
Tommy Cook, the Wiley veteran, might be saving his tires for later. Tanner Jack running third. Billy Hudson fourth. Cole has worked his way up into fifth. Matt Dimmitt sixth. Tim Wilcox in the 98-9 are running seventh. Take comfortable, comfortable lead. Hunter Jack, Tommy Cook, Tanner Jack, Billy Edson, Austin Cole. Well, laps to go, and we're still status quo. Hunter Jack out front, comfortably by almost a full turn. Tommy Cook, second, Tanner, third. Billy Hudson, fourth. Austin Cole, fifth. Matt Dennett, sixth. Tim Hoorcock, seventh. That'd be 10 to go. At the line, 10 to go at the line for the 41H of Hunter Jack. with 11 to go. This thing went from a stretched out, everybody. Dead even at the line, a great start. Tommy Cook to the outside, Hunter Jack to the inside, drag race down the back stretch. Cook gets a fender out front. Now he's got a door out front. Jack makes up all the time in the apex of the corner. Here they come. And Hunter, Jack gets through three and four better than Cook, and he takes the point. And on the inside of Hudson. Hudson now hustles him through three and four. He gets P3 back again. Nine to go. The winner of this race pulls the invert for the next 50 lapper later tonight on the three eights. Hunter Jack, Tommy Cook, Billy Hudson, your top three coast found his way into fourth.
Austin Cole, the pit stop earlier in the night, makes that, uh, made, must have made the right decision as the car is better than it was. Six laps left in this first 50 lap event. Six laps left in this first 50 lap event for the late models. Under Jack out front. Tommy Cook, Billy Hudson. Are they gonna make the move or are they gonna save the equipment for later tonight? Lots of extra strategy involved in a format like we have going this evening. Comfortably out front, Tommy Cook, Billy Hudson, Austin Coe. Next time by, you're going to see the white flag. We got 48 in, 48 and a half in. And Jason flies the right flag, one to go. And the hand is out there, Eddie Winter, Hunter Jack. We will run down and talk to him and get that invert pulled. And the rest of the guys are going to hustle back and start making changes on the car so they can get ready for the three eights. After this, we'll do some compact heats and some other things. Our first, we're going to have a couple of words with your winner of the first 50 lap feature of the evening. The Jack Attack team, a hunter jack. Well, I say that the uh, fan club has uh, arrived. Come on out. It's going to have to be really quick, though, guys. We've got a, a lot of show to get into. There is rain in the, in coming. So he's going to draw for the invert. What numbers are in there? Two, four, six, eight? Two, four, and six are in the bag. He's hustling. He's feeling for them numbers, and he pulls a four. That four is a, mag four is a magic number tonight. Man, this Mike. I'm going to shoot it. A couple of quick pictures. I'll get out of the road. Four is the invert. Four. The Hunter Jack gets out front and hit his marks and did a nice job. The Van Dorn performance machine. Quick, 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 ladies. I'm going to talk to him. we got to get this show on the road. Hunter. Just because she's having a birthday, you know. We'll talk about it. You got out front, hit your marks. Um, don't tell us exactly what you said when the debris come out, but uh, that had to break your heart a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I knew we had a good car, and I was kind of saving my stuff there, so I think I, I thought I had a good shot. I wasn't sure if I wanted the top or the bottom, but I figured the bottom was the way to go. 
Um, but yeah, the car was great, and hopefully we can do the same thing in the next one. Wait a minute, you're saving your stuff and you just won. Now how does that, that don't really equate in my mind here. Well, I was able to get out front and my spotter said I kept gaining, so I started backing off, getting in the turn, and just being really smooth trying to get off the turn. Well, it looked good, and I know the tires have to be the same tires as you just ran and stuff, so saving your equipment is a smart move. Let's give you one more round of applause. He wins the first one. Here's Hunter Jack. Four lap dash from four quickest qualifiers. John Chilko gets a big, big lead. Chip Heinzelman second. Josh Richardson, who's a very late arrival, gets around Brandon Brown and Jake Brummett in the 57. Only four laps. These guys got to get on, get up on the wheel early if they want to win this one. He'll go to the outside. Find him on the inside. Heinzelman, one lap to go. Heinzelman on the inside. Chuck up to the outside. Richardson getting in there and mixing it up a little bit. Chip gets a little, a little loose. You win or Chip Heinzelman? No. Chip Heinzelman wins the four lap dash for the compacts. Your four fastest cars as they cruise by. Baran Sailor, Lynn Lag and Wilkinson, your front four. Jason waves the green and we're off. Zach got a pretty good jump. We talked to him during autograph session. I'm going to get everything out of this car I can get out of it. And he jumps out front here early in heat race number two. Mac, last year's track champion. Put a fresh paint job on that animal. Orange Sons roughing yellow wheels. We'll find them anytime one disappears. Sheldon Lindlag finds the inside on a Warren Buran. And we know that Sheldon's out there. Hunter Wilkinson says, I've had enough of this. Got to go find out why my car won't run like I want it to. Heinzelman to the outside of Baran. Kennedy's going to make it three deep. Going to get a Harry in there. Yes, it is. Kennedy gets into Baran. And that will bring out a caution. Well, Heinzelman will assume outside the front row. Green flag flies. And Zach Sater with a good start that time. Heinz someone and finds some racing room on the outside. Oh, you can't see one for the other going down the back stretch. Heinz someone gets in the corner a little bit better. We'll see who comes out of the corner. And it's gonna be Chris Heinz woman. Showing a little lag in that car that uh, Wants to just try to get to second place. 
And he finds room. You gotta admit that sounds funny. Chris in the 56 is about three tenths faster than anybody that last lap. We'll keep an eye on the timing and scoring here in the tower halfway through. Four in, four to go. Zach Saylor turned in some times a little bit better than he did earlier in the night, trying to run Lundlag back down. Chris Heinzelman, just a tenth quicker than Lundlag that time. As they cross the line with three to go. It'll be two this time by. Chris Heinzelman in the 56. Chris going to be late going to allow him to uh, didn't have a chance to get that car qualified or anything, but I think he's going to uh, hump him along pretty good. And the chicken flag flies for the number 56, Chris Heinzelman.
Tate, Jim Wilkerson. Bringing them around. Looking like an even start. They're allowed to get going at the cone, and they do. Looks like they're dead even going through one and two. Peek says, let's get going. Lee does not get a good bite coming out. Wilkerson out front. Justin Peek on his hot bumper. And I mean on it, like he just gave him a little love tap. No. And I believe we're back in business. Justin Peak out front. Not by workers when I was not looking. Trying to fix a microphone here too. We got him going again. Justin Peak in that newly wrapped new speed secrets in the suspension out front here. Three laps to go. Workers and Comer Terry Lee battling for third. Oh, Comer got a good jump coming out of two that time. Going to go to the outside of Wilkerson. See if he can do some damage going out front. He's got a lot of room to make up. Two to go. Peak with a nice, comfortable lead. About seven or eight car lengths going on the back stretch. Bobby Comer gets free. He's going to try and run him down. Whoa! It's a little bit sideways. He saves it. Can't tell me Comer's not trying to win this thing. He gets in there, goes sideways, going through one and two, too. Tim Miller makes the pass for fourth in the back side, past Terry Lee. Peek goes through three and four pretty smooth. Unless something really weird happens, Justin's going to get him a victory, and he does. We think that Ninja Turtle he's got right with him is named Raphael. I don't know. Does anybody know the red turtle? Raphael. Well, then, they don't say you think, you know. Well, it looked like a red stripe. So that's what we're going to call it. Justin Peak. Got to feel good coming home with a new heat race. Spending mama's money. Accelerator, Howard going to try and follow him through. Carol going to hang tough on the outside. She's going to try and get that P1 right back. Look at that 71 machine. Get to the outside. Howard thinks he's going to spook him. Boy, three deep. Puff gets into Carol because he got squeezed by Howard on the inside. Okay. Restart 3.0. Puff and Carol. 
And bring to the start line, Prof gets another jump, Carroll does not go anywhere. Yep, that's a mechanical problem. She's waving her hands. We're going to keep it green. Power to the outside takes P1. Anna Carroll, that machine was hurt from the contact earlier. Howard and McBride are out front. Well, we'll watch the lap times here. Howard quickest on the track last time by. 18.04, 18.03, by like uh, just a smidgen. Puff about a full second behind, so the race is going to be out front with Howard and McBride. We'll watch the times on the transponders for you. McBride quicker that time by about a tenth of a second. And so they've been running down and got uh, 13 laps to do it. And then the drive just a smidge quicker. How it goes 18114, the drive 1809. So even the eyeball test are staying just about the same distance. Second quarter of time from McBride. It was hard on 18.155, McBride on 18.125. So 18.02 and 18.06, these guys were just virtually the same speed, and McBride can really in a little bit of time. And you know, Howard misses his mark a couple times, McBride may have a chance to catch him at this point. We are halfway through. And we're glad quick about a tenth that time, a tenth and a half. And you can tell. The eyeballs say he's been running a little bit. He's glad up on the wheel, I bet. Leaning forward, trying to get that bus thing to go just a smooth faster. Almost identical. Last lap by. McBride closed the gap and really moved slowly. Two tenths that time, a tenth and a half. Very Going up about a tenth quicker. That's the one thing, Preston, it might be another. Might be the most exciting three-car feature we'll ever see. Here we go. McBride caught early. Busting a lot of his time. Don't have to worry about it now. Started with the back. Relatively back, you know. And he was on to the bumper of Chris Howard. Five to go. Oh, a little bit, a little bit loose. And guys going to pick his spot. And guys don't have any radios. 
don't know if he knows he's back there or not. Sometimes you can hear him, sometimes you can't. Four to go. And the traffic come into play. Three to go. Howard still maintains the lead. McBride looking for an opening. Chris hitting his marks pretty well. McBride closing the gap, going through three and four. Two to go. And McBride's going to make a move. He's going to have to make it pretty quick. He's got a lap and a half to go. This Howard sails with three and four pretty comfortably. McBride's looking to push that car to the outside. We're on the go. Let's see the Setcher brothers. Hey, hey. Howard on the outside of Puff. There's a little bit of lap traffic. And that is going to do it. It's Chris Howard at the line. Brad McBride comes home second. John Puff third. Quick qualifier, he did the inward and it managed to sweep the nine. It's Christopher Howard in the 5.0 Frankie Plating Works special. Get some fast photographs. There he's out of the car, let him know. I'm not doing a pretty consistent race. Got out front. Here was Marks, he had to go to McBride, was sniffing around that back bumper. Gonna go 20. And sometimes those are interesting 20 laps, folks. Round choker, Bruno Hansman, gonna be around. Brown on a pole, choker to the outside. They're stopping the log pedal at the cone. They do it. Here we go. We are off and running. They're leading with the line. Choco throws it into the corner. Brown has the use off hand. And then Choco got the advantage. Went down the back stretch. Hanson. Hot the crowd on the outside trying to get P2. That's Choco. Hanson and Brown and Brunt. The top four. That's your first two rows. A little bit of something, something coming off the back of the 51 machine. We'll keep an eye, keep an eye on that. On the right rear. Do a little dirty something. Wilkinson wisely pulls off the track. That car is not performing with his standards at this point. And John Chilcote out front. Chip Heinzelman. Back to him a little bit earlier. A quick qualifier of the night. Take a look down the inside. Choco says, whoop, I'm gonna do that. He throws it in the corner of the car, bounces a couple of times, and he gets out. Here comes Chip down to the inside. Heinzelman makes the pass. Is it gonna be the crossover? Oh, he's looking there. He's looking there. Chip gets through the corner a little bit cleaner. Gets out front. And it appears that uh, Chico might have been holding four pints and then he's taking off and running away. Brown fighting, hanging on to that third spot. Richardson boxed in. He wants to get out there and Try to run these guys down at 9X machine and feature winner last week. It's fast. And sometimes you just get stuck in traffic.
Richardson finds his way down on the inside, takes over P3, another big puff of smoke out of the 51 machine. Might be normal. And we've had smoke of all the years before. Chip out front. from Michelle Richardson, run at your top four. Nine and 11 to go. Looks like the world famous Josh Richardson trying to reel him in. Oh, he gets off the corner, we're really, really, really good looking to get to the inside for P2. Halfway through. Chip better be on his toes, because company will be coming. The gap no longer exists. Here he is. Hello, on the inside, Chip says, oh, hey, I got to get going. Gets in the three a little bit deeper now. He knows he's got a race on his hands. Richardson looks to the inside. Hines him into the outside. Chip picked it up a little bit. Got to the one he picked good that time. Richardson got the horsepower. And if the green machine's got the handle and the silver machine's got the horsepower, who's going to win? Richardson pulls and Chip gets sideways a little bit, trying to keep up. Ron Duran gets down the inside. Gentlemen move. Let those guys battle it out. A little bit of tire smoke off the 54. Chip's pushing that car as hard as he can push it. Richardson just stop out front. Brummett's still third. Chip coat fourth. Brown fifth. Five to go at the line. Five to go at the line. Look at the 54, turn a little bit sideways, you see the blue smoke that's coming off the tires. And working in losing as hard as they can be hurt. Got three little ones down by the fence in turn four. We need to get them out of there. Got, got three little ones down there by the fence. And somebody please get those guys out of there. It's a safety issue. They don't know where we are. Throw a yellow flag. One to go. Okay, we won't do it, but we got to get those guys out of there. Richardson wins. Huntsman finishes third. And the 57 of Jake Brummett moves up second. Those folks are responsible for those three youngsters that were down by the fence. Could you get them, please? We do not, uh, you know, we're walking back. We don't want them up by the fence, especially when the racing's going on. Last thing we want anybody hurt. So we got here late, the world famous 9X, Josh Richardson, puts it to the field, started in the back, got out front, ran in good. That is his second in a row. He won the first feature event for these cars last week. And 
Vem de novo, Car. Ah, não já acho que estou lá no A car do fast machine. Casa Grande on the pole, Joe Muldoon on the outside, Ryan McIntyre on the inside on the new track record holder, Wicked Bradley on the outside. They pulled the four invert. Tyler Clark, Tim Miller makes up round three. Heat winner, winner Justin Peake to the inside of row four. To the outside of him is the seven of Bobby Culver, Wilkerson and Lee bringing up the backside. Ten cars, 25 laps. The 190 of Casa Grande and 76 of Maldon were off and running. Casa Grande then stuffed it inside. Maldon straight to the Caprice out to the outside. Gets out to the point. He's got room to drop down. I don't know if he knows it yet or not, but he is going to lead lap number one. Jacob Bradley taking a peek to the outside of Casa Grande. Frank says, nope, I ain't letting you in that easy. This is the feature son, Dante Heroes. Log in. Leads on lap two. Ellen Clark takes a peek to the inside of Jacob Bradley. Jacob's gonna give him a little race room. Tyler can stuff it in there. Nope, shut the door. And that's the way they're gonna come across the line. Maldon, Casa Grande, Bradley, Clark, and McIntyre. Tim Miller, sixth. Peak, seventh. Justin Peak decides that we got him all over the place. Miller spins. Peak makes evasive action. The person of Monte Carlo out front is looking for the anxious. Decent start. Bush chiropractic machine out front. Jacob Bradley trying to squeeze underneath the Casa Grande. I don't think there's enough room. There is now he gets down underneath and gets the center of the door of Frank for second. Goes to three and four. Slides a little bit to 190. Holds P2 for that lap. Four in, 21 to go. Casa Grande clears Bradley. Stretch him out a little bit, Muldoon out front. Clark looking to move a little bit of grass down on the inside. You can work in there, it's a good place to go, but if you gotta stay low, it's a little bit tough to navigate when you get in. Pete gets a little high, Cody slides up underneath him. Cody, Frank says, oh, I'm gonna let you know I'm back here. Clark again looking to the inside of Bradley. Bradley looking to the inside of Casa Grande. Get a little close, no touchy. Bradley looking to the inside. Maldon out front for the first seven. Lap 18 to go. from the start, the nine in and 16 to go, this time by, Casa Grande hanging tough in second, Bradley just all the way right back by front third, I'm not so sure we're going to change a little bit of paint that time going through one and two, Tyler Clark being patient, waiting for somebody to make a boo-boo, and he can make a move and get to the outside with the inside and head both ends, same thing with McIntyre, he's just watching.
Nardine has led from the start. 11 laps in and 14 to go. through six, folks. First to through six is one and tenth apart on the racetrack. That's how even the last three six cars are right now. Someone's going to have to have a mechanical problem, a tire go away, a driving mistake. A lot of things can happen. You can set a guy up and blow a few arc out and try to set somebody up. The next guy's going to dip underneath you and vice versa. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Ten to go. Going to be nine with the line. Maldini hitting his marks. Bradley trying to take a peek to the inside. Casa Grande says not yet. Bradley got a finger up to the corner panel. The thing gets out of the corner. Bradley trying to force his way underneath. Going to find a little bit of racing room. Rubbing a little bit, these guys are put beside each other. They're almost team cars, Casa Grande. Got him down the back stretch. More close racing, close racing. Yellow flag of Justin Peek is spun out on the back stretch. Oh boy, seven to go, and this thing's been We go with the cone. We got a little anxious. And, oh, went. they took off. Good start this time. Maldon again gets a decent start. Gets out front. Casagrande drops down. Protects that lower line. Oh, they're squeezing it in. They're squeezing it in. Clark, is he going to stuff it in there and get Casagrande's attention? Frank Scott's been handling well on the outside tonight. And it continues to do so. I don't know if he's bad enough to get around Muldoon, but my God, here we go. He's on the outside of Clark. I think that's Comer making the big move. Comer in a seven. Bradley in the seven. Clark on the inside. The battle for P3. Close racing. Man, not hitting each other. Comer gets a good bite. Good jump. Going down the back stretch. Muldoon still a half car lead on Casa Grande. Six to go, five to go at the line. Here they come. Comer and Clark putting on a show. Looking for third. You can't see the one car going down the back stretch. There's never that close. We're telling you there's one-tenth difference. You're seeing it right now. Casa Grande taking a look from the inside. No. No room. Comer gets in a little bit hot, goes high, loses the spot. Bradley's going to get up underneath him, and I bet you McIntyre's going to, whoa, look at that 3D McIntyre making a big move. And Comer and Bradley get together, and off the two as they go. A little bit of landscaping. White flag is flown for all the ball. We got Mulgan, we got Casagrande, we got Clark, we got McIntyre, four very fast cars out front. Casagrande trying to get a little bit better start than he has the last two. He goes up, out snooking him, and boy, Casagrande has got even Steven at the line. Can the 190 work the outside? He's been working it for quite a while. He gets a good bite, he's out front. McIntyre looking to go to the outside. Challenging Muldoon, Muldoon cuts him off a little bit, clean racing. But the 190 at Casa Grande out front, he made a promise to me if he won a feature race and he's gonna do something silly. And I know what it is. He's got three and a half laps to get this thing done. Hit your marks, Frank. He's out front, the Yingling 190 machine. McIntyre around Muldoon. 
Clark and getting to the outside of Morgan. Two to go for the white. The England machine of Frank Casagrande, Ryan McIntyre trying to run him down on an M80. Tyler Clark, Joe Muldoon, Preston Peak, and Tim Miller battling for fifth. The gap is closing the white flag, flies for Frank Casagrande. He's out front, got three and four to go. Clark looking to the inside. McIntyre looking for a mistake. Casa Grande out front. He's going to bring it home. Your future winner. And we're going to go down and talk to Frank. I might be his first feature of his career if it hasn't been a long time. What a race these guys put on every each and every week. Man, oh man. Hey, Kenny Barnes, how are you? From the race of Kenny Barnes, walking all by me. hard hit about two thirds away in the season last year and tried to knock the wall down here on the front stretch. That's a completely new car and I think they got that thing figured out. He'll be out of the car. There he is! Oh, he's marked by his teammate! I'm going to get him before the photographers do. Because I remember the promise that he made. Congratulations. Congratulations. I remember the promise you made, brother. Guess what you got to do? I'm going in the stands and kissing every woman I know. Oh, just my age. Just my age. Is this your first feature in Frank for a long time? Or what? In a long time. This feature. Keep it Last feature when I had, I had hair on the top of my head and it was black. So, well, I want to thank the fans. The fans who come out here, you people are unbelievable of any sport I've ever played. Uh, next of all, definitely got to thank the Lord for all he's given me. To be this old and to keep on doing this and to have teammates, uh, it's unbelievable. Second, also, Kenny Young, my car owner, who's put two old guys that just keep, I can't thank you all enough. The Fishers, the Cooks, Every in racing, this is one big family. But I'll tell you what, this boy right here, I, I, he motivates me. I got to beat him. I got to beat him. But again, you fans are unbelievable. Any sport, you keep coming back week in and week out. Tell your friends, tell all those old people my age, keep coming out because this boy ain't done. This boy ain't done. So, you know, ladies, my age, or I should say seasoned women, Want to come down and give me a hug? I would love it. We're going to bring him down a little bit late, Frank. Congratulations, Pat. A couple of the guys got out early. Might have a little bit better tires. Comes late in this race. Coe and Hudson gonna bring him around. And it is a good start. Whoa, Hudson with some horsepower. Gets into one well. Jumps out into the lead. And goes down the back there. Man, that's about a three car length lead right out of the gate. Traffic getting a little bit hairy. Fisher a little bit loose. And Tanner Jack, Matt Dimmitt, Fisher going to go to the inside of Matt. Ooh, Matt Squally loose going in bad on the 216 machine. Jeremy Wallen hot on his bumper. 
Tommy Cook and Hunter Jack battling for third early. Cook on the inside, Hunter on the outside. And Randy Cook, we're going three deep in the back. Randy decides to go to the outside. And Wilcox on the inside took him three deep going into three. In the meantime, Hudson, I know it's early, folks. There's only four laps in, but Hudson's looking pretty strong right out of the gate. Gary Fisher, Jr. in the 81, gets by the 41 machine. And Hunter Jack, Jeremy Wallen, eyeballing him now. And Billy Hudson. Out front, Austin Coe, last year's track champion, hanging tough in second, Tommy Cook. The veteran in third, Terry Fisher, Jr., the veteran shoe in fourth. Fisher to the inside of Cook. Fisher's got a little bit fresher tires on the 81 and it kind of shows. And he gets around Cook on the inside. Gary Fisher Jr. closing the gap on Coe. Hudson out front, leading the first 10 pretty comfortably in the double zero machine. Fisher again dropped out of the first 50 lapper. Got some fresher donuts on that car. Matt Dimmitt says the mechanical problems are just too tough to overcome tonight. We'll park this car before we do something bad, so he's gonna call him off, call it a night in the 216. Wallen looks to the inside. Uh, the 41 of Hunter Jack. Wallen makes the move. That puts Jeremy Wallen up into fifth. Using the eyeball test, I'd say Cole and uh, Fisher are starting to close the gap a little bit on Hudson. Sixteen in, thirty-four to go. The running order remains the same. The interesting move right now is watching Fisher and Co. Fisher trying to set him up. Austin doing a good job hitting his marks and keeping keeping that car just a little fat. And as I say that, Fisher gets in the inside of him going into one. No touch. Just a nice clean move. And Austin's gonna let him go. Probably a wise move at this point. You still got thirty-three laps to go. Get those cars. The 
81's hustling. Closing the gap on William Hudson. Billy Spotter. These guys have Spotter, so he knows he's back there. He was on cruise control for the first 20 laps, but uh, that's going to end right quick. As we got 20 in, and 30 to go. And the second of two, twin 50s. Terry Fisher looking to the inside. Hudson knows he's there. Now he knows for sure. Terry Fisher, Billy Hudson down the back stretch, side by side. Fisher gets into three a little bit deeper, clears him. And Randy Cook, the 23, he'll be out of the way. As the 23 machine just loses power, he might limp his way back to the pit area. Looks like it might be able to make it. We should be able to stay green. We'll keep an eye on him. In the meantime, Terry Fisher Jr. jumps out in the lead. Reports are there's a little bit of a fire under the hood of 23. Halfway through the cross flag, Jason let them know. 25 in, 25 to go. Quick qualifier on a half mile. Had some mechanical problems in the first race, but boy, I think they got them ironed out here. The Fisher Fabrication Special in 81. Out front, hitting his mark, doing a good job. William Hudson still hanging tough in second. And Billy, the next experienced racer. Austin Coe, our track champion, hanging tough in third. Last lap by, Hudson was quickest caught by a tenth. And that reverses Fisher this time by his quickest car. Actually, Austin Coe turned the fast lap that time. Austin Coe taking a peek underneath Billy Hudson. Didn't make the move, but he had the door open. Fourteen to go for Terry Fisher, Jr. Tim Wilcox gives them racing room. Well, that's one way to do it, heading to the pit area. <laughs> Tim Wilcox, call it a night. Jeremy Wallen still hanging tough in sixth. Fisher out front by a wide margin. Hudson and Cole, best battle on the speedway. Cole running a little bit rich. They're throwing balls of fire out the exhaust. Tommy Cook and Hunter Jack battling for fourth. Find a little bit of room on the bottom side. The red 28 of us to go take second back. Got a long road to hoe. He's gonna have to pray for a yellow. I think Fisher's out there and running and hiding right now. He's disappearing. 14 to go. 13 now. We got 37 in.
39 in, 11 to go. Terry Fisher Jr. got a two-thirds of a straightaway lead on the field. Austin Cole hanging tough in second. Billy Hudson third, Tommy Cook fourth, Hunter Jack fifth. Cook and Jack battling it out to the fourth spot. Gary Fisher Jr. might catch up with some traffic here. Seven to go. Jeremy Wallen and uh, Tanner Jack directly in front of him. Six to go. Those two cars were racing for position. So. Fisher's going to have to navigate them. Five to go. I think they're quick enough where I think Fisher just sits in a rocking chair. He might be okay. This is where experience will pay off a little bit. Four to go for the 81. Austin Cole hanging tough in second, Billy Hudson third. If I was a spotter, I'd tell him to sit back and relax. I don't want to get mixed up in anything. Three to go. Fisher clears Jack. Jeremy Long gonna give him some room to get through. That could have got interesting. Go second, Hudson third, two to go. Right flag flies for Terry Fisher Jr. First with three and four, pretty smooth. Clear sound, a little bit of weather. Now, I didn't get the celebration with the left, the second flag of Terry Fisher Jr. Austin Cole, the car that just doesn't seem to want to cooperate with him. He comes on second, Billy Hudson third, Tommy Cook fourth, and Hunter Jack fifth. He's going to be out of the car here shortly. There he is. He pops out. It's the winner of the second of the 1250s, Terry Fisher Jr. He was a quick qualifier on the half. And the quickest car tonight on the three eights.
jdprincephotography.com. You want to see some of these photographs of ducks all night long? What? What? CJ photography. Oh, you guys are tricking me now. Huh? I finally figured something out and you changed the game. And here comes the crew. Absolutely. Get right in there. This is the last race of the night. We've got plenty of time, huh? Victory Lane, we'll get in there and talk to him and get in there. The supporters of uh, short track racing around to Steve Hammond and get in there Victory Lane Circle for the Braves. like you had no trouble at all. Uh, you know, the half was really good. It's just, you know, the car got real hot for one, you know, no reason and got 250 degrees and, you know, pulled in, went to start spitting water and uh, what happened was actually blew an intake gasket. We were actually back there, you know, I can't thank these guys enough. You know, we never gave up. You know, pulled the intake off of it, replaced the gaskets, you know, got it all back together and, you know, just in time for the future. So, I, you know, I can't thank my crew enough and everybody that helped out. You know, it just, it, it was a team effort, definitely not. That car looked like it was on the rail, handled hand really nice. I'm, I, Dave, I need a microphone, so it, you know, the, uh, the French retires couldn't hurt a little bit because it dropped out a little bit early. And putting an intake gasket isn't the easiest thing to get done, especially on these motors that are so delicate, and you've got to get everything just right and torque just right. So that's pretty cool. Now it's singing to us. Why is it making that funky noise? I just got the fan on right now, just be cautious. It never got hot, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why we really want to go out that second round. We know we had, you know, fresh retired and these other guys, and, uh, you know, it, it was definitely in our favor. But, you know, I wish we could have ran the first half, but I guess luck didn't go away that, in that race, and, you know, it paid off in the second one. Yeah, so let's give him a little applause. He put a time in that second race. Terry Fisher Jr. 